wow, that could not be a year and a half, and I've never seen that happen. So <laughs> it's just a, um, you know, I know not a huge number, but like tiny things like that, right? You know that. And people are not fearful to come out, and they, you know, there's a sense of community, and a lot of these people are, are students and whatnot, and they're interacting with a wider community. It's a, uh, it's pretty nice, yeah. It's a, it's a sad thing that when there was, the, you know, the, that people did some stuff in the mall. Yeah. Um, it only takes one person, and they got so much. Publicity over it. You know. yeah, I, I'd like to. I'd like to defer. Sorry, I'd like to defer that because as the person that was leading the entire outreach after that event and leading up to that event, I made sure that we focused on the positive outcomes. Right. Yeah. So if you were on social media, the only image that you saw on social media was when we had about seventy people show up to guard our mosque while we were praying. Yeah. I got shared again. CBC call me. CTV call me. And that's what I've chose to talk about. They wanted to talk about the perpetrator and the attacker and mm-hmm. this, you know, mm-hmm. vandal, whatever it is. And I said, no, you know what? I'm not going to let, you know, pardon my language and whatever, uh, a punk malign an entire community. Right? So, so, and that's, that's what just one person. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. And, and I've been up here a year, as I said. Sure, I've been up here a year and a half. I have been to every nook and corner of these two counties. That's just the way I am. I'm 27. I turned 27 last month. I've driven to 42 of the 50 states, every single Canadian province, right? Um, and, and I talk about Bruce and Gray. I'm talking, you know, Red Bay, Howdenville, you know, Port Ogden Pumpkin Fest, to Leeford Scarecrow Invasion, Mennonite Farm Tours down in Holstein. I've been all over. I've never, ever met, you know, felt unwelcome. Never. In fact, where I come from, Hamilton, believe it or not, has the highest amount of hate crime in all of Canada. Right? You can Google that right now. Um, so that's what I said. When there's a lot of conversations after the fact that, oh, we're, you know, we're, we've always been like that up here and, you know, people are not accepting. I said, no, no, no. I've never felt that. I yeah. don't think that's the case. Right? Mm-hmm. So, Yeah, I, I know of someone uh, who talked to the person who was the vandal and at least... Their, their story was that um, basically they were a very lonely person and then they got into some group of uh, kind of neo-Nazi types and then they they were like drugged and then peer pressured into committing these, this act and yeah. they were very sorry and they, they actually really liked the mosque. And, I feel sorry you know. for that uh, gentleman as well. In fact, a lot yeah. of our community members are business owners in town. A gentleman owns a Petro Canada, another gentleman owns a Honda dealership. A lot of our members are doctors at the hospital um, and people knew him. In fact, our former, in fact, our former imam, which is our pa- pastor, I guess, yes, yes. Mm-hmm, was his neighbor. Yeah. Was his neighbor. Mm-hmm. So never, and when they talked to me about this person, they never had a bad thing to say about him. So as I said, I said, you know what? People get caught up in, in bad influences and whatnot. Um, but why, why even focus on that? Focus on what happened after. Focus on this. Focus on the conversations that we're having after the fact, right? Mm-hmm. That's what's important. Yeah. And I, I can't tell you how much we feel valued and supported in churches such as yourself or yourself or the Alliance Church or, you know, other synagogues or other, other community uh, uh, organizations come out to support us. And they did. A lot of them did. Right? Um, so we're, we're blessed in this community. I know one of the uh, Law of One teachings is that every altercation is an opportunity for greater compassion. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's how we do it. <laughs> you know. Are you the imam of your community? No, I'm not. I'm their spokesperson. Um, okay. The imam is uh, another gentleman. He was supposed to be here tonight, but he's in Port Alton because we have another uh, mosque okay. in, in Port Alton. Okay. So he teaches there uh, oh, okay. on uh, Monday nights. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. But if any time you want to connect, as I said, I'll get some information from you before I leave. Yes. We'll true. set something up. Yes, yeah. I was just looking at this next video. You were feeling moving on to thinking what thoughts do you have about how we might enhance relationships among people of faith or no faith? <laughs> that was my contribution, food. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and for us as a community, my faith, our faith community, food is a 
big deal. Oh, it is. Because we see the kind of communing, you know, I teach our people, communing together is pleasing to God. So communing together is pleasing to God. It no one appreciates the value of food more than me. I come from a South Asian family. We love our food. And my in-laws are Italian. Right? Oh, they wow. Love their, they love their food as well. So um, just, yeah. you know what? You should come and check out Christmas at our place. So, so I don't wow, know. I mean, that's you amazing. have influenced with your past or whatever, and, and that would be... So I really want that for this no, to happen. No, you should. Oh, so you know? Graham is my pastor. Oh, okay. And, and but, Graham is the most supportive person. Yeah. yeah. He is. He's but even so three inclusive. Maybe a couple of faith communities just join together. Eat, just, it's just eating. Mm-hmm. Just eating. Mm-hmm. It's not, you know, you hear <laughs> other churches that put on meetings and all well, this. I, I know the, uh, yeah. the Métis are, are big on eating as well. <laughs> Uh, well, well, all of the meetings I've I've been to are, are usually food uh, re- oriented, you know. Uh, either you, you know, well, and they have four f- events a year, and they're all potlucks. Um, and then what, when I go, when I went to one of the other meetings, uh, like that, they they talk about you know their hunting licenses and uh, harvesting licenses and other food related things. I find that uh, getting to know each other and the people that I get to know are the people that I work with in whatever it is. So there are lots of opportunities these days for churches to work together like the homeless in Owen Sound mm-hmm. or we uh, cooperated with other churches to bring refugees, uh, you know, and other things like that where you work together and you get to know each other and you get to know that you know what I had um I'm gonna think I remember reading some studies and uh, so so they did a study on school ch- school children in a camp and so what they did is first they put them into, they, they gave them like different uniforms and then made them play competitive sports together. And then they became very antagonistic to each other, even though they were part of the same camp. And then they decided, well, how are we going to get these people to get back together so that they're nice to each other again? And so what they did is they set up a bunch of activities where they all had to work together in order to complete the task. And if they, if anyone, so for instance, at one point they had to pull a school bus with a rope, and all the children had to participate. It couldn't be just one team; <laughs> they had to all do it. Otherwise, they wouldn't have pulled up the school bus. And so, maybe if, if we managed to think of something where kind of like everyone needs to kind of get together in order to make it work, like maybe planting trees. I know Neighborwoods North does a tree planting every year. And uh, if, if we could get several faith communities out to help with that, and then maybe also have a meal afterwards or, to celebrate. combating something. Hate. I mean, look at all the yeah. stickers that have popped up. Right? These are a big problem uh, in that sense. So, yeah, mm-hmm. there's, there's a lot of ways that we could all contribute and get together. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> nice chat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I'm so used to seeing you in your sandals to see your snow boots. Oh, like... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's kind of cold out now. Yeah, yeah a little cold yeah. with sandals. One, one time I was walking in sandals, and then uh, someone called the police. Huh? And then the police came, and they were, uh, like, asking me questions and all these like things. Like a wellness type of thing? Uh, yeah, because they, they thought I had escaped from the asylum. Oh, <laughs> because I was wearing sandals oh, in the right. snow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 What's a camera? Yeah, and, and it has a microphone too. Oh, okay. okay. It's one on each side. Yeah. Well, first of all, that's neat. I've yeah. seen one of those before. Yeah, well, yeah. So, so it'll be up on YouTube. Uh, I don't know if, if St. George's has a Facebook group, but I could post it there. Oh, I'm, I'm not on Facebook right now. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know. I, I could forward the link to Graham and you can circulate it if you want to. Okay. <laughs> 
parts of that record then and also voice? Yeah. This, yeah, this? So, so there's so voice you and can, video. You can do video, okay. Yeah, yeah. In fact, we are Because the truth is, I'm sure I've made a lot of mistakes along the road in the last number of years in Owen Sound. But I can tell you, just before I come here, even, I have friends who are dying on the streets. Okay. And I live with that every day. Every day. And I'm privileged to know them. What I'm not privileged is to see them die. And so, how can me, myself, enhance the relationship and get out of the corner where maybe you might not think well of me 
that I could be your friend enough to step back and learn from you, at the same time still be me. Because those people are our people, from every faith and every non-faith. Because I've had enough of the dying, the slow dying. And that's across the board. And I'm sure we all have experiences. I'm about to. Because I'm more than willing to leave this town for a long time. But in my heart, I'm not allowed to. I have the money. I'm not the poor man. Nobody knows who I am. But I do know this. The specialness of every one of you. And especially those who maybe I've injured in your heart. Please forgive me. Please. Because I know you're you're nice people. I just like being so passionate. It's nice to hear. And I remember this like the framework here that I so appreciate, so appreciate how you're holding the circle here too. And what I noticed that what comes up for me is like when I think about peace. Faith, like I'm thinking about violence, I'm thinking about violence that is occurring as we speak, I'm thinking about violence that's occurring here on this territory where I have the privilege to be, even though I don't um, have any rightful ownership to this place. So yeah, I appreciate just uh, how really we get in there and it feels important to bring that into the space and to acknowledge the pain and um, what we're dealing with here. It's, it's uh, I think there's a huge gap between actions and words. I think there can be a huge gap between actions and words. And if one wants to be appreciated and forgiven and respected and loved and all of that, then one has to be open to all of human nature and everything in it. And that's not... I'm trying very hard to keep my composure here right now. I can't, um, it's very hard to hear words about, I may have hurt people, I want to be, I want to be seen as a different kind of person when people can't actually bring themselves to even be tolerant, which in my opinion is the lowest rung on the ladder of what we can be doing to appreciate everyone's different. I'm not going to say more than that because I'll get angry. But you are angry. You have a right. Oh, I am. But I'm trying very hard to not just take this meeting uh, somewhere where you want to go. To, to, uh, to the group, I think, because I invited you all together um, to keep this at the level of uh, dialogue, mm-hmm. not argument, or debate with one another. It's fair to express anger, uh, it's fair to express remorse, and that's what's happening. And so I just invite us to move on uh, into the rest of what it is without further response to what has happened. This is about our conversation with one another, not about following a thread uh, which has been established uh, and is kind of in reference to the phone culture or the media culture that we live in, we follow threads. They carry us. And I just want us to stay focused on the thing that we did to be about. So, so, it's only like, so right so right 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 okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. I, I um, wanted to talk about something that, that, is, is, that we are doing in, in the community uh, to help provide kind of low-income housing with the glassworks and the currently we have a Tamarack community uh, with currently 64 acres that we're working on to make into an intentional kind of model community where you can live on site and have the trees and shrubs and perennials provide you with all your nutrients and calorie needs 
as well as have a nice tight-knit community and a workshop where you can create things with 3D printers and whatever tools you need. Um, and it, it, you know, the, the <laughs> kind of, it, it's open to all faiths as all faiths have, you know, mercy and compassion or, or forgiveness and compassion as, as their kind of core elements. And we all know about the age of peace prophecies and that it's come now and that all we have to do is embrace the peace within ourselves and uh, forgive ourselves and uh, allow ourselves to be and to have forgive all other people and have compassion for all other people. And we will see the new paradise. And the, these things are happening, and everyone is cooperating, and we're all working together, and we can just continue on that, and we can have a very beautiful uh, future, you know, from the beautiful present that we already have. Mm. Uh, one of my, my thoughts I've been thinking about this um, in the weeks previous, so when this came gathering was some, this is one of my thoughts that I was actually having a couple of weeks ago so when this gathering came it, it was like wow I've got to come to this but one of my thoughts was um, how, how might we enhance relationships among people of faith or no faith I'm a community leader in a small faith community um, and I would love uh, it, it's one thing for people that have influence to be able to meet together but for my community to eat, basically, with another faith community. And to exchange that, maybe that is a couple of faith communities getting together and to come into each other's environment but, and have a way of facilitating dialogue between, a dialogue of just getting to know different faith communities, but over food. Um, whether that's a potluck, um, and that you would take turns to, and if it's on a Sunday, that there's a gathering, that that gathering for that faith community um, would be focused, say, for that Sunday, where, where a faith community in a church or, or whatever um, could have another couple of other faith communities come, and, and we just eat together. And we have different questions for just our people to get to know another faith community. Um, I, we would love to do that with the, uh, with the, with the mosque. I'm going to take you up on that offer. Here's my, here, here's, you know me, I like food. Uh, here's, here's, my, here's my take on all this. Um, I feel we live in a, in a day and age where, you know, the way things have happened and, and you know, you talk about the media, you talk about sensationalism, where we focus too much on our differences and not enough on our commonalities. I go from door to door to door and talk to my friends from different faith groups and friends from no faith groups as well. Um, and the one thing that's common is that be it any religion that I've come across, every single religion or a person of no faith, at the end of the day, they teach you to be good. They want goodness. No religion in this world teaches you to be bad. Um, I feel it's important to focus on those common elements instead of getting distracted by the sensationalized differences. Um, I'll give you a personal example that hits home for me. I'm part of the, uh, the Muslim community up here in Owen Sound. Our mosque got vandalized earlier on this year. Um, and we had a lot of attention and, you know, a lot of stuff going on. And I'm, and I'm deeply thankful to, to you know, my... my Friends from other faith groups in this community, be it yourself, be it, you know, uh, the, 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 the Jewish community, you name it. Um, but when all that was happening, I had a lot of people. I had, you know, let's say CBC, CTV, you name it, you know, calling me up and trying to focus on what happened. What I chose to focus on instead was the outcome of it. And I'll tell you what the outcome was. We had a lot of outpouring of love. We had about 70 people show up to guard us at our mosque while we prayed. You know, you all probably saw those pictures on social media, there's an angle there. I would rather focus on the positive outcome instead of that one, pardon my language, stupid act by that one particular person that I will not allow, you know, for them to malign an entire community. So I think to, in a nutshell, it's important as a starting step 
to focus on on what you know combines that at us and what brings us together than our differences. And I think we'll get ahead just by doing that. There's a saying, Jews and fools. <laughs> there you go. Since whenever we have a, a potluck, we have a lot of people coming. When we have a regular service, we don't see everybody's coming. I was read in the Jewish news a few years ago, there's a, there's a group of about 30, 40 Jewish people by birth, and once a month they meet for a meal. And they don't talk religion. They just bring ethnic food and eat and have a good time. That's like so us too. There is something about food that Absolutely. pulls people together. Um, maybe for the nourishment of the stomach and maybe the nourishment of the mind. Um, answering your, your specific question here, what thoughts do you have about um, how we might enhance relationships? I've always believed since peace group days you know, that when you do stuff together, three simple words, do stuff together, you brought that up with food. Food is essential. But when people come together and get to know each other just by hanging out together, doing things together, maybe organizing something together, that's the new that way to go. I love that potluck idea. I, I think that would be very easy to do, just move from place to place and do it once a month. And circulate.
three or four thousand people, and maybe 150 people show up. And she says, I've got more people here percentage wise. <laughs> I'm like, well, there's my aunt, and my wife, and I, and not too many more people. And she said, I was really pleased there's this many people. And I'm like, wow. So thank you all for coming to that. As I say, it's easy to go, wow, oh, I might hear about the meeting some other time. And I think we're all here because we care. If we ever have another meeting in here, there will be. But seriously, just, of all the nights, you know, oh, God, and I love you getting up in the morning and watching the fishermen. I drive my students up to to uh, to Georgia College, and I go, here are the schools, and across it's, the sun is coming up, and I go, this is God's country. This is in Toronto where I see the CN Tower and I see the back of all these beautiful factories and all the garbage trucks. I go, imagine the schools here and I look across and it's all Green Valley. You know, I go, are we lucky? I appreciate it for God's sake, you know? You walk down by the river and say, these guys are fishing, isn't that something? You have a dog, you take the dog for a walk. You bump into somebody. I live in Glen Harrison Park, I'm always bumping into somebody. Oh, I've lived here 20 years. You know what? I've never seen these people in my life. You go, isn't that amazing? <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you can avoid those terrible bumper stickers that have gone up all over on Sound in the last year, those, you know, hateful stickers, and you can avoid the comment section of the Sun Times online. Mm -hmm. I actually don't feel like we're living in an in an area that's experiencing elevated hate. I, I have yeah. found, I was saying this to our group, that every time there's been either, you know, a, a xenophobic, a, an anti-Muslim, an anti-Jewish, an anti-anything incident in this community, that we are the exemplars of how you should act in the face mm -hmm. of something terrible. Everybody seems to kick up and say, I'm not standing for it, I won't do it. And they support whoever they need to support. I, I have yet to see evidence of anything else in this community. And, and I think it's wonderful that 30 people came out on a crappy night and represent a whole bunch of different faiths. So I'm feeling you know, quite positive about our community and that we're on the right track. Just don't read the comments in the sun <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I Yeah. Well, for, 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 from my experience, at least with uh, interacting with uh, the First Nations people here, is that everyone is really friendly with them, and they're really friendly with everyone else, and they're like a major part of our community, and so, you know, everyone's, it's, it's, it's very nice. We, we, we've only had cordial relations, and um, I know... You know, they're all uh, on the same kind of forgiveness and compassion bandwagon that everyone else is. And ev every kind of altercation that arises, uh, ev any kind of conflict, is an opportunity for increased compassion. Mm -hmm. 
You know, it's it, uh, like uh, this lady was saying that that's what happens in our community. You know, when uh, some, something happens to someone in our community, then everyone else gets together uh, with compassion and says, how can I help you? You know, I'm here for you. L let me let me be here for you. Let me help you. You know, and, and that that's what always happens. This is, this is my experience. This is other people's experience. <laughs> Uh, and welcome. <laughs> May you have similar experiences. <laughs> Is there anybody else who uh, hasn't had opportunity to chime in if you would like to? I guess it is I'm not sure about our opportunity before we uh, turn it up for her and move towards. I did have one thought on a slightly, I guess, pragmatic level. So what's occurring to me in this is how do you scale up, you know, interfaith gathering or interfaith interaction? Um, and I, I think the idea of, uh, you know, interfaith pop up or, or coming together, that's a fabulous one. Um, how do you, now, for those of us who might be in the no-faith community, we don't have, I don't know, an organized no-faith community. <laughs> <laughs> might be, but, um, uh, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, what I was thinking about is it's interesting because every large event around here is an interfaith gathering. We're all from various faiths there. So there's this interesting sort of paradox between if you're not aware of faith at all, if you're just faith blind, you don't get the interfaith thing where you have to be aware that there might be others here and that you're not experiencing the woes because you can just basically ignore the fact that people might have different faiths or backgrounds from you. And at the other extreme, you know, you're in faith camps and you're not interacting with people, it doesn't work. So it's sort of like you need this mixed gathering with another purpose, but with an awa explicit awareness that we're coming together as different faiths. So I've been trying to think about that. I can't come up with any good ideas, but I'm like, what? interfaith chili cook off or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, something lighthearted that would be visible to the larger community, where it's like, oh, you know, let's go and check out the, the Anglican chili. <laughs> 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 I, I had a thought that, is, uh, that sort of takes off on that idea a little bit, or at least in my mind it does. And the thought is a sort of a philosophical kind of thought, I guess. There's, there's, a part of this, there's a part of everybody, I think, that wants to say, we're all the same. And then there's another part that says, everybody is different. <laughs> everybody is unique. And that's, I think that's one of the tensions that, that we have to sort of, each, each individual has to sort of come to grips with. How do you keep those two things in tension? In, in, those two things that are in tension, how do you keep them to be in tension without falling down on one or the other side? We're either all the same, which is obviously in the sense a lot, or we're all different, which is in, in Thinking about it, it seems to be there's maybe more truth in that statement than there is in the statement that we're all the same. But um, anyway, that's, that's just a thought that, that was running around in my head. It's that paradox between wanting to think we're all the same and then also recognizing that we are also different. I guess there's, the challenge there, I guess, is to find the positive in that and the way forward. I just have a quick one, is that we're all an aspect of one creation experiencing itself. So, 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 so we're, you know, like, we're all one as, we're all one part of this one creation. And then we all have our own unique experience because uh, creation wants to experience everything, everyone's perspective. You know, so in that sense, it works. <laughs> so is there a lot of perspective that needs to be is there another perspective that needs to be heard before? In about three minutes, I'm going to say, let's turn a final comment to so, I, I, oh, sorry. We can you enhance. One here, one here. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm fond of a lot of stuff, but uh, I don't. Uh, but I find that I'm improving my communication and how I'm improving is I listen more than what I say. 
So I drive people to the hospital, and we spend six hours in the car, one on one, and it doesn't take much if someone's suffering, whether it's physically or emotionally or whatever, if they know that they have a chance to speak and say their story, they will jump in and they will, and they will stop when it's over. When I counseled them, I wouldn't get anywhere with someone I was counseling unless I knew they had said everything they wanted to say. So you could sit for a whole hour, which was much better than, you know, butting in every five or six minutes to say, why don't you try this? No, people want to be heard. And, you know, we're, we're kind of sitting around this issue talking amongst ourselves, but we, we need to, I need to, okay, more and more just sit down and listen to what the people in my vehicle are saying as they're going through a tough period of, of their life. And uh, I don't pry, but I, I've learned certain open, open-ended open types of things where they'll jump in. And, and suddenly, uh, and I go away a much smarter, uh, kinder person. I heard another couple of voices. I, I was going to say about enhancing our relationships just by getting to know each other. And how do we get to know each other? Well, there are many ways. One of them is eating together. But um, the people that I got to know the best is people I've worked with on committees or on other, uh, other projects. And I think that in Owen Sound there are a number of things that as faith communities we can work together on. And that's how we will get to know each other and we will build relationships. I think there's animosity and fear when we don't know other people and we think that they think differently than we do. So uh, we just need to get to know each other. Well, thank you. I, I, I'm hearing a lot about relationships and eating together and having some fun in public space together. Um, breaking down barriers by getting to know one another. Those are the themes that are rippling through here. Um, one last thing I want to invite you to do, not to go back to the person that you were talking to before, but maybe the person next to you at this point. Um, learning together is only only makes sense if I form out of it, to me anyway, an intention. So I want to invite you with the other person that you choose to talk to, uh, next to you or one over from you if you don't want to talk to the person next to you. supposed to say an intention of something that we want to do based on the conversation that we had here. Yeah. I like the part about the, you mentioned the trees, right? 
I think that's pretty interesting. Uh, for me, aside even from the trees, I think it's uh, uh, this whole tackling climate change as well, right? I mean, that, that's it's huge, especially for people from my generation mostly, uh, and then, you know, generally in the community as well. So I think those are like some common names that you know we can all work to, right? Uh, no matter what faith group or non faith group or whatever you're from. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So I think. Um, yeah, my intention is to uh, visit more uh, and uh, evangelical yeah. uh, <laughs> church sometime soon, and uh, maybe uh, join your guys' potluck Absolutely. when you have it. We have to. We have to set something up. Take this. Uh, connect with her for the pot, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that that would be kind of your intention then, to make that pop up with uh, no. the lady. Forget, forget name. Me too. <laughs> Not good with names. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So, 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 and one of these is you're going to have the Anglican Church over as well. Okay. So this, see you soon. Uh, yeah. Anything that you need from my end, just reach out. And okay. Oh, okay. Thanks. You have to go? Okay. okay. All right, okay. You have a good time. grandfather.
So to say mm. don't say is like... There's no way to talk about these things. Maybe, maybe that will be an intention for me is to find a better way to talk about that. Sure. In conversation with you. Sure. <laughs> Uh, so evangelical Christians in, in the mosque oh. uh, and possibly the Anglican church. Any other intentions? Uh, I don't mean this to be controversial, but in some ways we're doing this all wrong. Who should be talking to or listen to? Um, I would have preferred tonight to be at a club talking to someone who's reading someone who had gone through post-traumatic stress syndrome. And my intention is to speak, take time, rather than being in large groups, uh, doing the one-to-one uh, stuff, and really know what's going on with that, where the person's coming from. Mm-hmm. So that, that pushes my compassion button, and that leads to the kind of Which, um, are you talking about? Which rabbit hole? Which? Um, when I say rabbit hole, it's, there are a lot of young men particularly. No, but you said you worked 20 years with something. Just oh, 20, 20 years in the States of watching people act like the racism wasn't re- resurfacing. Oh, okay, sure. There was a huge backlash, um, and now it's, you know, it's, it's resulting in deaths even more. Than, okay. you know, so, um, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is that, that from what I see, I would hate to see old town go down that. And if people aren't willing to wake up and say, you know, it's happening in our community and we need to start engaging with people that are feeling so disenfranchised that hate is their own town, then um, so that's my intention. I think it's time to do that. We have a beautiful community and I, I, I just want to do whatever I can keep it that way. There's an anti-racism network online that if you have yes. connected to, you can connect to, and they've started to have events yeah. in the community. And um, yeah. um, I was mentioning to our group tonight that there is an article in the Washington Post <coughs> called uh, The White
audience fight and share clap about the God says a wonderful, wonderful art. Yeah, and it's a, it's long, it's a really, really long read, but you know, essentially it talks about this person who was raised in the time that they could speak to be mm -hmm. a, a white supremacist and who was raised to believe that everyone else is lesser and then just his exposure to people who were different from him in the university or college setting started getting him to change his his uh, opinion and to research and realize that a lot of things have been thought wrong and then when he was outed for being who he was in the you know the white supremacy community that the people who had been his friends at college rather than hating him and, and putting him in a corner and ostracizing him made the conscious choice to continue to accept him and to continue to invite him to events and just not talk about his background. And he eventually left that whole movement. So, you know, the key is, is integration and, and calm and getting people talking. Yes. So the reason I thought it was home is exactly um, that article and other examples of the same thing, and that it really was a negative intervention. Yes. Okay. And it was beautifully done, and it's happening um, more and more often. So, yeah. Thank, you, thank you for reminding me about that Thank you all. I mean, um, it is hard to cross. Yeah. I love the mm -hmm. fact that you said that was uh, fine. Um, we've all been some intentions to one another, which is good. I want to thank you for your patience with my own presumptions about what might be possible in a group like this and, and for um, coming together in, in a good spirit to begin a conversation of this time. I, um, I just thought for a poem. Did I tell you about poetry? <laughs> but I, I love to hear other people read poetry not just myself, so I wonder if anybody would like to read this poem by Tesla Mirage. I have a question. Nice and well, please. Love. Love means to learn to look at yourself, the way one looks at distant things. For you are only one thing among the many, and whoever sees that way heals her heart without knowing it from various fellows. A bird in a tree say to her friend. Then she wants to use herself and things so that they stand in the glow of brightness. It doesn't matter whether he knows what he serves. Who serves best doesn't always understand. Slip. Chesla. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce it, but I need to ask you. Thank you all for coming and uh, for safety. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's green religion. That's what it's called. Yeah. The, the basic premise is that the age of peace has come, and the easiest way of joining the uh, new paradise timeline is to have forgiveness, compassion, and unconditional love for all beings. Well, we don't work it like that, we take donations. So she won't give me anything. I put a jar over there. If you have a contribution that you can make, I, I wanted to visit the synagogue sometime. Is, is that a possibility? Sure. Yeah. When, when, when do you have your service? Not too often. We don't have too many numbers. So. Oh, okay. Oh. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, because I, I grew up in North York. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's a Jewish kind of neighborhood, oh, yeah. you know. And so I had lots of Jewish friends. Yeah. And they, they wanted me to go to a synagogue because oh. I had gone to a mosque. Sure.